to Dandelion Lessons and um, today I, I want to talk about beginner's mind and beginner's heart when it comes to our creative practices um, and I add heart in there because while we can have beginner's mind and, and we all kind of know what that means and I'll talk about that a little bit more but when I say beginner's heart, I, I'm referring to that sometimes we can feel inadequate when we're doing our creative practice, even though that's not the purpose. Um, sometimes we do feel that way um, because usually we're we're judging ourselves or comparing ourselves to someone else, and and that robs us of joy. So <clears throat> there's a poem. I made some notes. <laughs> And I, um, I'll kind of read from these and look at them as I go. And as I get started, I'm going, I'm going to tell you about this first. This is a piece of clay board. It is archival and coated with archival seal. It is actually clay onto a piece of hard board panel. And I love them for graphite drawing. But I thought I would try it with watercolor and see what happens. Um, but before I begin, because I might just paint when I start painting and then speak every now and then, um, but I want to read you this uh, poem from Rumi, the Sufi poet. Come, come, whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving, it doesn't matter. Ours is not a caravan of despair. Come. Even if you have broken your vow a hundred times, come yet again, come, come. And I love this poem because for myself, and I'm sure for all of you, so often I have disappointed myself <laughs> by not showing up to do my work or not showing up in my life in the ways that I've set my intentions to show up. And whatever it is that I've begun, perhaps have fallen, fallen through and haven't carried through. And sometimes this gives us a sense of guilt. And so we are hesitant to begin again. I mean, even with a new diet, you know, like trying to eat better and things like that. When we slip up, we sometimes feel this tremendous burden of guilt. And, and it's hard to get back on track, you know. Um, but I love this poem because it reminds me that wherever we are, and whatever we're feeling and whatever is happening, it is so okay to just jump right back in wherever we are. And I love that. I love that idea. And I, I want to feel that way about my own creative practices and my own art practices. And I want you to feel that way too. I wish that for everyone. Because um, I often I often encounter people who have tried and they begin and they buy the materials and they get off to a great start and then they're disappointed in some way or let down by their efforts or they don't feel like they're progressing quickly enough or their desires don't match what's what they're actually doing and so they give up and I just want to talk about the reasons why we shouldn't give up and maybe instead we can change our approach and our intention. So there is this Zen idea of beginner's mind, and it helps us to see the wisdom in each moment. All right, that's, that's what it's sort of all about. I am spraying my panel here with the um, Infinite Love Mist by Aura Mist by Lotus Way because I love it so much. And I kind of broke the, um, the sprayer, so. That was my fault. I dropped it. <laughs> so, um, beginner's mind helps us to see the wisdom in each moment. All right. No expectations. It's just the wisdom in each moment. Without the pressures of being good 
or being successful or clever or even to create something that the world might find beautiful. And that that's that's what I discover over and over again with people who are um, beginning a creative practice. They have these ideals in their mind and and things um, don't always match up. And and there's a wonderful interview, or not, I don't even know if it's an interview, it's, it's just, if you know Ira Glass from um, NPR, he had this wonderful thing that he did called The Gap. And if you can, Google it and listen to it, because it's he's exactly right. Um, the gap is is what we feel when we're first beginning a practice and our results don't match our good taste. <laughs> so we have this idea in our mind, this vision in our mind and in our heart of what we want to come out. Um, just like I do right here, you know, I have some, you know, in my mind, but I'm going to try to get rid of it and just play um, because I'm sure I, I would surely be disappointed. I've never done this before and I have no idea what to expect. So I can't, I can't worry too much. So anyways, so, so. <clears throat> We can't fall into that trap, you know, when we begin something new and something wonderful and introduce something wonderful into our lives. We can't fall into that trap of, of being let down by the gap, okay? So the thing is about beginner's mind is it allows us to find joy in the present moment. And I find this so, so vitally important. Um, you know, there aren't many things in our lives that we can find that element of peace and joy, pure, simple joy in the moment. And, and we can with our artistic practices, dandelion lessons, all that they encompass. Because we can find simple joy in the present moment, the act of creation. Because we're allowing things to be as they really are, and not, not thinking of things um, as, as how we want them to be. So, so we're allowing to be how they really are and not how we want them to be. Because the truth is beautiful. In the, deep of, the deepest sense of the word, the truth is beautiful. And that's what being in the present moment allows when we're talking about creative practices. And other things. I mean, there are so many things it can apply to in our lives, right? But the truth is beautiful and truly in the deepest sense of the word. I don't want to forget anything that I thought about, so I'm looking at my notes. So when we when we approach our creative practice with preconceived notions on how how it should be or how it should turn out or, gosh, I wish it looked like hers or his or any of those things, why can't I do this better? When we do that to ourselves, we are robbing us, ourselves, of the process of discovery and surprise. And most of all, we're robbing ourselves of joy. We truly are. I'm just enjoying this so much, seeing what it does. It's so gorgeous, wow. Oh, anyways, <laughs> um, so when we come to our, our creative practice with this sort of childlike sense of wonder and awe, it allows us to be, to be really bold in our curiosity, but we can also learn to be gentle with ourselves. So it's possible to be very bold, to be very, very bold and our curiosity and our sense of play when we approach our work and at the same time be very gentle with ourselves. And the, and the way that I have achieved this is, is that I come to my work fully present and, and I work in silence and I have, you know, silence I mean by 
by what's around me. You know, um, I, I choose to be alone and, and centered in my sacred space when I have time alone. I might put music on because I love to be transported by beautiful music. But to me, that's still silence as far as noise from the outside world that I, am, I don't want to invite in. And I work very slowly and I really savor everything that's happening because this is a process of discovery. And I'm savoring the tactile experiences. You know, notice all of your senses. What are you hearing? What are you smelling? You know, when I use beautiful or a mess or frankincense oil in my water, you know, what am I smelling? How is that making me feel? How do the earth pigments smell? You know, what am I hearing? What am I seeing? How do, how do the paints feel under my brush? Are some gritty? Are some very smooth and delicate? All of these things matter. Are some more sparkly and some more matte? Are some more vibrant and some more quiet? How do those things make me feel? And another important quality that I try to bring to my practice is, is that I try to lose sense of time. So while I'm working and I'm paying attention to my senses and I'm paying attention to, to what's happening right in front of me in the moment and not being so concerned about my expectations, I lose track of time. I, an hour can pass and I, I have no idea. <laughs> I can lose track of time. So mostly what we want is to be still in our hearts, to be still in our hearts and, and to approach our creative practice in this way of no expectations, full of beginner's mind and beginner's heart. We can empty all of our st stress and worries and preconceived notions right out of us, be in this moment and fill ourselves back up so we're full to overflowing. And that is not only a gift to us, but a gift to everyone we encounter because then we are, we are more receptive to others and we are more able to give when we are full. Does that make sense? I mean, it's pretty common, common thought, I'm sure, but sometimes it's good to think about it. And so I'm gonna just stop talking and just paint for a little while and um, see if I have any more thoughts. But, but I really, you know what, I'll, I'll talk later. I'll just, I'll just paint.
fun. Um, I let it dry. I don't know if you can see. It's really beautiful. Really fun. Um, I think this is an interesting, an interesting surface, the clay. It's very, very smooth and the watercolor reacts really unusually on it. The pigments do beautiful things. Look at the granulation. Um, the metallics really sparkle. I don't know if you can see that. Here's the dark iron glimmer from Wild Thorn. So beautiful. My sweet Kim makes the most beautiful things. So this was a real pleasure, and I think I would like to do it again. And here's the wonderful thing about clayboard. You can take this to the sink and wash it off with a washcloth and let it dry, and you can use it again. So it's perfect for this sort of practice because um, you might want to keep it the way it is, that's fine, but you also might want to just save it for the week and then the following week rinse it off and start again so you can have a new one each week to enjoy. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put it on my desk and enjoy it for the week and the next week I will rinse it off and begin again and just use it over and over and over again, which is really wonderful. Um, yeah, it's kind of a special quality about the clay board. So anyhow, um, yeah, that was thoroughly enjoyable. <laughs> I let myself play. So I hope, I hope these are things that maybe you already think about. <clears throat> and I would love to know your thoughts, um, especially about your creative practice and, and any fears you have or disappointments or um, thoughts about your own shortcomings, you know, and how, how you can let go of those so you can be in the moment and experience the joy and wonder in a childlike way that is so vital to us as human beings, I believe. And that is why I believe so strongly in every person having the opportunity of, of pulling a creative practice into their life, even if it's only for 10 minutes a day, um, even if it's only with a set of child's paints from the drugstore in a, in a sheet of copy paper. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm really lucky that I have these beautiful materials and, and part of the reason I have them is because it's my profession. I, you know, I'm a professional artist so I have these things and, and quite honestly part of it's a tax write-off for me, you know, so I, I can afford in, in my budget my professional budget to, to have some of these wonderful materials and not everyone can and I couldn't always you know so I understand what that's like and and I never want that to be a deterrent to someone and so in my studio where I teach I have a lot of different kinds of supplies and some of them are just child's paints and just regular paper and we create with them and we make beautiful things with them so wh wherever you are at this moment and whatever you have around you is enough a ballpoint pen and a piece of paper is enough look up some ballpoint pen artists <laughs> and see the wonderful creative things they do I mean it, it Anything we have is good enough. You could take really strong coffee left over in your coffee pot and, and, and use that to paint, truly. So, anyways, beet juice is beautiful. <laughs> um, the most important thing is that we have that time, that we can empty ourselves and bring ourselves to a place of beginner's mind and beginner's heart and, and have that practice of being in the moment. And that's what matters. Okay, so I hope you found this useful. I hope you will have the time to create today or this week. Um, 
without any expectations and just savoring the beauty in the moment, the beauty of the truth. Whatever is, is beautiful. All right. Thank you so much for being here. And I hope to have another dandelion lesson. I'm, I'm sorry, another artist for everyone video um, before the end of the weekend. I have an idea. And I just, um, right now I have a few moments. Um, and so I thought I would do this. I've been thinking about it. <clears throat> but I probably won't have time to do the artist for everyone video until the weekend. But it's coming. It's coming. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye.